do it. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, compliance as code and, and the idea of uh, being able to audit all your infrastructure and uh, applications and everything above. Um, and so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So my name is Matt. I'm uh, the manager and solutions architect for APJ for Chef. Uh, that's just basically the way of saying that like, I'm over here in APAC and doing a whole lot of technical stuff. And uh, I've been at Chef for about seven years. So that's like forever in startup time. And i uh, done a lot of things over the years, uh, professional services, consulting, uh, engineering, um, you know, community management, uh, long background in open source. That's how you get a hold of me. I also have a podcast I do with some friends. Um, Andrew Schaefer, was, uh, he's been a guest on it a few times called Software Defined Talk. If you like to hear me ramble, uh, it's not professional. So, <laughs> so starting off, um, who's got software uh, defined pipelines? You know, CI CD, right? You've got some sort of CI CD infrastructure. And, uh, you know, I, I used to do some development like that. I'll try to stay right here. Um, and we had, you know, dev to QA to staging to production, right? Fairly familiar kind of stuff. And you know, my pipeline was working well. We're coding away. Things are getting delivered in a continuous fashion. Doing test-driven infrastructure. Uh, you know, I've got unit tests for everything. It's it's moving along nicely. And then one day, out of the blue, uh, the auditors show up. Right? Uh, anybody work with auditors? You know, they show up every quarter, every six months if you're lucky. Maybe once a year. But their job is to see what's going on and to stop you from releasing code. Right? Um, <laughs> And, and they start off with a big binder, or you know, maybe PDFs, but you know, gigabytes of PDFs. <laughs> and so they've got these, these rules and regulations. And they you know, slap it down on your desk and like, for the next two weeks, we're going to read through this thing. And you are not going to release features. You're going to stop what you're doing. And we're going to make sure that uh, things are set up right. So you open it up, pop it open. And the first thing we, we see is uh, an SSH control. And you start to read it, and it says, you know, hey, SSH supports two different protocol versions. Uh, SSH v1 was broken a long time ago. It's not maintained. You should not be using that. Please use SSH v2. Uh, and you're like, all right, I got this. Um, how am I going to verify this, right? And you're, you're a sysadmin. Uh, you, you, know, you, you know a little bit of, uh, little bit of Bash, a little bit of Perl. Uh, so you're like, I'm going to whip up a one-liner. I can check to see what version of SSH we're doing. And uh, I'll use grep, because everybody loves grep, and a little bit of sed, because I'm an old school Unix sysadmin. And I'm going to be able to see which version of the protocol I'm using. I'm like, cool, check the exit code, and we're good to go. And then the next thing, you know, open it up a little further, and you get to Apache server information leakage. And this is essentially like you go to a website, and you crop off the HTML page, and it drops you in a directory, and it says Apache 1.6 on Solaris 8. And everybody knows, like, you shouldn't be using that old version of Apache. You shouldn't be using that old version of Solaris. So you don't want to you know, leak that information. So that's what this is saying. Like, don't let people know what version of Apache you're using and which OS. So you're like, all right, more grep and said. I still got this. I can handle that. Uh, I'm going to look for the server tokens. That's how I know uh, that I'm serving that stuff up. You know, you, you've seen this before, right? And then they're like, <laughs> not so fast. I've got this thing called the Center for Internet Security benchmark for CentOS 6. Uh, if we look carefully, we'll see it has 172 pages. Um, and, and you're like, wow, 172 pages. That is a lot of grep and, and sad. And uh, I'm going to be beating my head into a wall uh, for a while, um, at least for two weeks, right? Um, but you'll make it put through, because the auditors, they're like, hey, you know what? If, if, you, if you can pass this audit, we can come back in three months. And you're like, all right, whatever we need to do to get a passing grade of a C minus, um, you know, we'll, we'll get the auditors out, and we can go back to having fun and playing golf, um, if that's what you're into. You know, so the auditors, you finally get through it. Uh, you get them off your back. The machines are passing the audits, and you can get back to delivering code. Right? You can get back to delivering features. But you know, the security officer said, you know, that was kind of painful. Let's introduce a security review step to releasing, right? Anybody have a security review team? You know, uh, we were talking about the idle, where you got to have the checkoffs and the sign-offs and the release, and you know, who everyone's got to prove things. It's just, it's just a big damn because everything's gonna. You're like, hey, we're doing continuous integration, continuous delivery. 
we would like to release 10 times a day. And the guy's like, all right, that'll be two weeks. You know, turn around. And you're like, wait, 10 times a day? is like, well, 10 times in two weeks, right? Um, so it kind of starts to back up, right? You, you, you introduce this roadblock, this, this dam, and all your features are, are held back you know, by, by Hoover Dam. Um, and so compliance becomes this wall. You know, they become this line that says, you know, you have to go through us. Um, and, and so you're like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll slow it down. Maybe, maybe you're thinking, you know what, we'll, we'll just release it and we'll scan things in production after they're out the door, right? That way I still get to do my continuous integration, my continuous delivery. But, uh, you know, my code's been released into the wild and I turn Telnet back on and, and, you know, there's all sorts of craziness going over there, but we're scanning. We're going to find it eventually, hopefully, fairly fast. Um, it's not really the, the greatest of patterns, right? And the problem with compliance and security is it's not really something you can bolt on after the fact, right? You have to kind of build it into how you operate. You have to make it part of the process. You can't say, every three months we're going to think about compliance, right? Every three months we'll make the auditors happy, get our systems secure, and then they become unsecure again, right? And we've seen this, right? The, the uh, Verizon put out a state of PCI compliance report. Uh, I need to get the, the 2016 version, but I bet it hasn't changed. Um, you don't actually have to read it. Right there on the cover, it says, Two-thirds of organizations did not adequately test the system, uh, the, si the security of all in-scope systems. So people aren't even checking the machines they have today. Does that sound familiar? Yeah? yeah. Nobody wants to raise your hand. You don't have to. <laughs> um, right? And, and what we've seen is these trends are continuing. You're getting more systems. You're moving into more and more diverse uh, application sets. And sustainability is low. Keeping up with the amount of change, it's just not happening. Right? And you know, the good news is um, we now live in a transparent society because all your information's online. <laughs> uh, you just don't control it, but you don't have to pay for, for, uh, for, secure, uh, for um, credit checks. So that's good, right? Uh, so yeah, security theater is a thing, right? You go through the motions, you get your compliance officers happy, you pass the audits, you move on, even though it's a tire fire in the background, right? There's just this burning mess of, of things that aren't getting better, but you know, the auditors aren't incented to, like, stop you forever because if, if they piss you off too much, they're not going to be invited back. Um, you'll find an auditor who's more compliant, um, <laughs> right? So you've gone through this process. You've got reports. You've got PDFs. You've generated all these, you know, sign-off signatures that, hey, you have a whole bunch of paperwork that says you are compliant. What does that mean? It means you take this big binder and you put it on a shelf and it sits there for the next three months until you get back to it, right? And so what you're left with is a whole bunch of shell scripts that are a little bit hard to maintain. I mean, I know grep and said, but maybe everyone doesn't. And keeping up with something like the sys benchmarks for the various operating systems, it's gonna be a little bit, a little bit troublesome. Um, and, and, and you've got, you know, you've got your, your, your engineers uh, who are using, you know, tools like Chef or Puppet or Ansible, you know, they, they, they're doing infrastructure as code. They've got their own set of tools. You know, they're not using grep and set anymore. They've moved on to higher level abstractions um, like, like Chef. Uh, and, you know, so we've got this communications problem where everyone has their language of choice. You know, the compliance guys use Excel. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, they, 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 there's a mismatch in how they work together. And so one of the things we know from the whole, you know, you know, we had the infrastructure as code conversation yesterday, is humans should not be logging into machines. You know, you want automation. You want, you know, you don't want humans talking to boxes. You want scripts doing it. You want, you know, Chef recipes, you know, Ansible playbooks, whatever. You want to have an interface that goes through code. You know, that's how you want to talk to your servers, you know, because people don't scale. Uh, and one of the things we talk about at Chef is the idea that, you know, Tools and culture are reinforcing, right? You can have the best DevOps team in the world using, you know, Bash and CVS, right? But most people have moved on to better tools. You know, most people are like, they're using Git and, and you know, VSTS and, and other, you know, and, and Jenkins, and they've moved on to, to higher level tools because the tools reinforce the patterns and the patterns reinforce the tools. You know, you want the tools designed for the way you want to work, right? And so what the, way, the way we want to work is through code. We want to have a common interface to talk to our infrastructure. You know? We've already got that for automation of our servers and, and, and you know, our, our infrastructure. Um, but wouldn't it be nice if our compliance, DevOps, and security folks are all on the same page? So that's what we're going to talk about now. So InSpec is an open source project. 
uh, from Chef. It's Apache licensed. Um, it's, uh, I'll, I'll talk about the open sourceness of it a bit, uh, but l let's dive into it. It is a compliance language. Uh, it's based off of the spec style of testing. So if, if you're familiar with unit testing, spec is, is in general uh, a style of a very human readable format, right? So um, over here we've got, uh, uh, don't worry, uh, um, down at the bottom we're describing the SSH configuration we want to see, you know, and we want the protocol, it should equal two, right? Your auditors could probably understand this, right? They're not sysadmins, you know, they don't know Perl and, 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 and grep and sed and stuff like that, but if you tell them the protocol should equal two, they can read that, right? And if you have a junior sysadmin, they're like day one, they, they understand that. But it also has some things here that your auditors are looking for. The impact, you know, is this critical? You know, if you're running SSH v1, uh, you might as well be running Telnet, right? Um, you know, so the, this is a critical thing. Also a title and a description and tagging. So you can generate reports off this stuff. So your auditors will get a nice big report that says, hey, SSH protocol equal to, you know, the SSH control one, two, three, four, um, it passes, and if they want to drill down, they can see what that's about, right? So this is what it looks like. Uh, it's one language. Uh, it works on Linux. Uh, it works on Windows, right? Windows. Everyone's got some Windows, and we're always uh, uh, worried about the state of our security and compliance there. Uh, so this is what a Windows control looks like. Um, a registry key. You know, uh, this is strong Windows NTLM v2 authentication. This is how your Windows machines join uh, an AD domain. And so you, what you're saying is we want the, the, new, the new authentication enabled so we can't have those Windows XP machines joining our, our AD. And so we look for a registry key. You know, your Windows admin, you've seen this before. Uh, the key, it should exist, right? Very human readable. And the, the, the value should equal four, right? So that's, that's high level, readable, understandable. Um, it also does uh, Mac OS, uh, Solaris, AIX, HPUX, BSDs. Um, there's a lot of stuff built into InSpec. So uh, InSpec has you know, pretty much anything an operator is going to care about in their infrastructure. You know, how your uh, Windows registry is set up, uh, what services are installed, what packages are installed, what users are directing, uh, what users are doing, what directories are set up, permissions, what's installed, what hotfixes are there. The things that your auditors are looking for, right? They've got this big checklist of, oh, is this installed? Is this patch there? Is this patch there? You know, we're, we're bringing that into code, right? Um, this isn't uh, intrusion detection, it's not a uh, uh, firewall, it's not antivirus. It's not a pen testing tool, but you know, security uh, folks like this, right? Because it allows them to just quickly blast it onto a bunch of machines to see what's going on in the infrastructure. Um, it's just another tool in your toolkit, right? Uh, it does bare metal, it does VMs, um, works with containers, uh, works with Docker. Um, so that's, that's on there. Uh, it also works uh, with databases, right? So we have the ability um, to connect to a database and run queries against it, right? So we can connect to your Oracle database or your MySQL database and run a query that says something like, uh, did we ship the default user with MySQL? Yeah, because um, that's something that happens sometimes. And so you can add these sorts of controls around your databases. Um, that's, that's fairly handy and very human readable. Um, also, can talk to APIs. And this is, this is where things start to get kind of interesting, right? So there's uh, an HTTP uh, resource, so I can just make a query to you know, a, a web server or you know, an API and parse out uh, the results that come back from it. Um, but I could also talk to clouds, right? So I could talk to AWS, Azure, I could talk to VMware, uh, the vSphere API, and run queries against that and see things like, uh, do our security groups have um, the proper inbound uh, you know, the proper inbound rules. You know, are the AMIs that we're using on AWS coming off an approved whitelist, right? Uh, do you know which AMIs you're using, right? Do your users have multi-factor authentication enabled? So we've moved on beyond just traditional Windows and Linux and, 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 and you know, uh, Unix and stuff, and actually moved up to the next tier of, let's talk to the infrastructure layer itself, right? Um, so InSpec works uh, remotely. So InSpec uh, connects to machines via SSH, you know, so your, your Linux, your Unix machines, uh, we're gonna be able to connect to them and run a script remotely against them. So you don't need an agent like a chef on those things. They're, it's not related to chef at all. Um, so it actually connects them, allows you to scan machines and see what's going on. Also works with WinRM, so you can connect to 
any Windows machine that has WinRM enabled. So right now, it looks like 2008 is about where that cuts off. Um, if you can get InSpec installed on 2003, it does work. <laughs> I can attest to that, but it, you know, we mostly stick with the supported operating systems. Um, so you can connect to your Windows boxes. I'll also connect to a Docker host and check the state of the containers running on it for compliance, right? Um, so that's, that's all pretty handy, and that's all completely agentless. Uh, you can also run it locally and just you know, check the state of the machine that you're having, uh, that you're on. Um, so it, you know, and it works with cloud platforms, and a lot more stuff is, 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 in, is in progress. Uh, we've recently started working on networking devices, and networking devices will give way to storage, right? And so then you can start to say, like, what's the state of our Cisco routers? You know, what, what are our, you know, our, our rules, uh, our firewall rules? What do those look like inside the data center? And so it allows you to do things like lock down your PCI compliance in the data center and start thinking, like, well, if I want to move to Azure, what level, you know, I can take those same PCI rules that I have in my data center, run them against my Azure infrastructure, also check the state of my Azure compliance when we get there. So that's, uh, that's pretty handy. So, InSpec is a completely Apache licensed open source, right? This means that you can take it, embed it in your commercial products, you do whatever you want with it. Uh, InSpec.io is the website that it all starts at. Um, there's the GitHub uh, repo. Uh, it's up on Supermarket, which is our uh, Chef community site. People are sharing compliance profiles. So you have your controls, you package them in a profile, and the profile is the set of controls that represent how you're testing something. So. Um, up on Supermarket, we've got profiles. Uh, there's an open source group called DevSec.io that does hardening profiles. You know, what's the state of my Windows patching? Um, you know, I want to harden my Ubuntu Linux. Uh, you know, what does that look like? Um, and so they've got a bunch of compliance profiles up there. Uh, and then learn.chef.io, there's completely free uh, tutorials you know, that allow you to test your compliance, uh, you know, your inspec and, and learn how inspec works uh, on Linux, on Windows on your laptop with Vagrant, on Azure, on, on VMware, on uh, AWS, you know, wherever you like to run it. And of course, we have a Slack channel that has, uh, uh, I don't have the number, it has like 600 people in it. So a very big, uh, thriving open source community. So just this year, you know, talking about being open source, um, over, 100, you know, over 116 pull requests this year uh, from non-chef employees. And that's kind of the, one of the signals of a healthy open source project, right? Is the patches don't come from one company. Um, and so we've seen uh, a whole bunch of new resources added. Um, we've seen contributions from the likes of, of Oracle, of Microsoft, of HP, HPE, um, of uh, you know, Accenture, Deloitte, PwC. You're starting to see this get picked up by the auditors, right? Because this is the grunt work that they don't want to do um, and allows you to get to the higher level conversations of like, let's start talking about remediation and you know, how we get the auditors to, to provide extra value. Um, and so this kind of comes back to a very simple process, right? The first step is detect. You need to find out what's wrong. Um, you know, earlier I uh, talked about the, the state of DevOps report. Uh, one of the things that uh, we saw is that 55% of organizations have no idea what the state of their compliance is. You know, either they're little startups who don't care, Maybe they're not touching money. That's a Venn diagram of overlapping people sometimes. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, people who don't touch money don't have auditors. Uh, that's, that's, that's kind of where that starts. So most people have some sort of audit requirement that they're not uh, working on. And so the first step is really just simple. It's detect. Let's find out what's wrong with your infrastructure. Um, and the second step is correct. You know, maybe, maybe you put Chef on those boxes. Maybe you know, you're using Ansible. Maybe you're old school and you're still managing machines by hand. But you need to correct the things that get flagged as you know, need to be remediated. Um, and then the things that you fix, rather than continuing to like, you know, fix them by hand, let's automate that. Let's, let's, you know, let's move the process forward and, and work towards continuous compliance. It's a very you know, simple process of find out what's broken. You know, this is not DevOps. You know, scan the machines, find out what's broken, what's not configured properly, which machines are still vulnerable, vulnerable to want to cry, um, that kind of stuff. Find the machines that are broken, correct them, you know, ideally with, uh, with some sort of a config management tool, and then automate that process. So instead of you know, constantly, being, you know, constantly fighting fires, you build a little bit of you know, uh, 
good hygiene around building machines right the first time. You know, maybe, maybe when you go to build your golden images, you scan them for compliance before you snap, you know, take that snapshot. You know, but then you take that same compliance profile that you used to build it and you run it in production. So you're testing day one and day two problems. Um, and so this is, you know, this is not DevOps, but this is getting you towards the motion. So when, when we start to talk with customers about, you know, oh, how do I get started with DevOps? We're like, look, it's hard. You know, we've heard a lot of talks about how hard it is, right? It's an arduous process. So um, what we want to do is just get you going through the motions. You know, if, if you start you know, acting like a duck and quacking like a duck, maybe you're a duck. Um, but, you know, maybe if you go through the motions of DevOps and get used to the idea of, you know, testing your infrastructure before you deploy it. You know, that's a radical idea for some organizations. Um, backing your compliance as code, that's kind of... Uh, a different idea. But what you want to get to eventually is this utopia of, um, achievable utopia, of all of your infrastructure being defined as code and all of your compliance being defined as code. So when your auditors show up, you say, hey, look, we have this big data center. No humans have been in there. Like, we don't allow access by humans. Um, the machines have all been provisioned, you know, by chef or puppet or whatever. Um, there's no humans on these boxes. Uh, those audits that we were going to step through for two weeks, we've automated that. Would you like to review the, that code, or would you like to review the output of those reports? Right? That can all be automated. And as you start to work through that process, you know, you build up that muscle of, hey, let's write tests for our infrastructure. Let's, let's write, you know, let's, uh, you know, start building up that that muscle and and working towards it. Um, you know, commercial pitch, of course, that's what Chef Automate, our commercial offering, helps you do. Um, and we're shipping a whole bunch of compliance profiles uh, with that. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the journey, right? That's the journey. So I think, uh, yeah, learn.chef.io learn has completely free tutorials, gets you up to speed on InSpec, you know, allows you to, to, to go and test machines. A um, little bit of cross-pollination with the conference upstairs. Uh, after this, I'm going to go teach a workshop on this. <laughs> So if you want to come to Windows Configuration Management and uh, Inspect uh, at the PowerShell conference, maybe you can get in for free. I don't know. Um, but we'll be doing that upstairs. Yeah. So do I have time for questions? or Do I have time for questions? Yeah. Uh, yes. So with the chef and the special recipes and Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the, the question is, you know, uh, Chef configures things and Inspect detects, you know, what's wrong. You know, it, it audits. So Inspect does not do any correction. You know, it, it's completely a remote reporting tool. You know, hands off your infrastructure. Um, and so the question is, is there remediation available, right? No, no, no. That's a question. The question is more like, is there existing standards? Yes. Oh, okay. Are there existing standards? Right, right. Uh, so there's a group called the Center for Internet Security. Uh, it's an industry consortium. They have, uh, they put out PDFs, free PDFs of um, what they call the SIS benchmarks, right? And they put them out for every commercial operating system. Uh, there's one now for Kubernetes. Uh, there's an AWS one. Um, they've got a couple of applications in the mix. Uh, the PDFs are free. Um, the, uh, and then they make uh, Microsoft SCAP profiles. So SCAP is... Uh, an XML format that System Center can use and run audits. Uh, we can translate those to InSpec, and, but we're not allowed to open source those. So the PDFs are free. It's like that weird gray area of free but not open source. Um, but we can ship them. So uh, the um, Sys benchmarks are part of our commercial product. Uh, but the, you know, so we ship all the Sys benchmarks. Um, the DevSecIO ones, though, are free, right? So those are just, you know, open source community, building up, hardening profiles. You go read the Sys benchmarks, and if you take something like uh, the Windows 2012 R2 uh, benchmark, it is 280 controls, right? And it's checking registry keys and patches and that kind of stuff. Um, you could go and implement that yourself. On Supermarket, there are a couple of Sys benchmarks where people have implemented them uh, as well. Um, so there are a lot of existing ones. Um, and one of the things that we've started to see is, is you know, people are adding 
inspect to their toolkit, like a lot of service providers. If you are an MSP and you have a bunch of customers and you're looking for an easy way to distinguish yourself from your competition, being able to say, oh yeah, we're running compliance audits in the background for you, you know, isn't that cool? Or if you're you know, an SI working with you know, government or healthcare, you can come and say, hey, we have these compliance audits for HIPAA or uh, I don't know the, the Singapore standards, but in Australia we've got APRA, right? You know, we've got some APRA standards. So we've seen a lot of that where you know, uh, you know, people are writing them, some of them get open sourced, some of them don't, but there's a lot of existing content. Uh, the really nice thing though is all the documentation on, on inspect.io, there's examples of every resource in action. So if you're like, oh, what am I going to use the Windows hotfix for? What's an example of that? Well, that's how you can determine whether or not you're vulnerable to WannaCry. So there's a, oh, um, there's a WannaCry uh, profile. So that, that's kind of a, a fun story. Um, you know, you're, everyone's familiar with WannaCry, right? It's that uh, uh, Windows patch. Uh, that Windows vulnerability that showed up uh, based off the WikiLeaks NSA leak of some stuff that M Microsoft hadn't patched, uh, or they had patched, but they hadn't told people why they'd patched it, right? And so the, the WikiLeaks leak was like, here's how you exploit that. And so then, you know, a couple days later, it gets weaponized and starts taking mm -hmm. over hundreds of thousands of machines, shows up on the news, and so your boss calls you up and like, want to cry, are we vulnerable, right? Um, and, and, and so, about six hours after that hit the news, we put up a blog post and uh, said, hey, Microsoft patched this back in March, it came out of May, and he, the, here are the hot fixes that if you have these applied, you are not vulnerable. If you don't have them applied, you're probably vulnerable, right? And so we just put that up and like, that took off like wildfire. Um, about three hours after that, we got a call from one of our large customers and said, we just scanned 10,000 machines. Uh, we're not vulnerable, but thank you very much. You know, thanks for putting that out. So what we're starting to see up on our supermarket community site is people are starting to do uh, CVEs, right? And a lot of the, the, you know, the named exploits, like your WannaCrys, your Poodles, your Heartbleeds, it's easy to check, you know, do I have the latest version of Bash? If I, uh, if I you know, connect to this machine with OpenSSL, Client Connect, do I get TLS 1.1? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, DevSec does have a, a, an OpenSSL one that is maintained. So, you know, it's easy to stay on top of that. Uh, so there's, there are a lot of community resources available. Um, you know, and it, it, it has a very healthy open source ecosystem around it, which is cool, right? Um, any other questions? Yes? Uh, no. No, so the question is, does the target node need to have an internet connection? Um, so inspect can run uh, you know, inside, the da inside the data center, firewalled off completely from the internet. If I have a machine and I can, you know, I, well, I can have the inspect run on that machine, and then I don't even need remote access. If I'm inside the data center, um, I can say, you know, inspect SSH to that box. And then the way, the, the source of those profiles can be local. Uh, it can be off of a website, it can be off of a Git repository, uh, it can be off of a private supermarket instance. So yeah, you can, we have lots of customers who are completely firewalled off. Um, we had a really good talk at ChefConf, which is our user conference, um, from a uh, US Department of Defense uh, contractor. And they were doing um, you know, military compliance checks and uh, completely firewalled off, right? So. No, so the, the target node, um, it does not require an agent, you know, the, you know, other than SSH or WinRM, right? Um, the, most of the compliance profiles are going to just use like basic shell commands, you know, so they, 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 some of it may be, you know, hey, if I do a PSAUX and grep that, and check the responses, what does that look like? That's under the covers. So inspect is, you're going to be using shell commands mostly, just the basics. Uh, and on Windows, it's usually calling um, WMI or PowerShell commands, right? So there's a certain expectation of, I think, PowerShell v3? Is that right? I'm looking at Steve Mrosky because he... Probably two. Probably two. So, so uh, like, I've been doing some Windows 2008 support lately, and that's where things start to get bumpy, right? So, you know, all the supported OSs, 2008 R2 and later, 
everything works fine, right? And and most of the most of the shell command, most of the, the the Linux and Unix resources are shell. There's a few that are Python. So um, you got to watch out because Python, not everybody has Python. You know, which sounds weird, but there's you know, if you're securing an operating system, you might not want a full-blown uh, language runtime on it. So uh, yeah, it's minimal. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I'll be upstairs at the PowerShell Conf a uh, Asia. Um, can people just go to that? <laughs> I mean, uh, is the law to, to foot and to feet? They can move. Uh, I'm, there's limited space. Yeah. Uh, just come on with me. I'll, I'll let you in. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a three hour workshop. Yeah. So um, maybe we'll run out of machines and I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yes. Yeah. A lot of that. Right, right. Right. So, so I, I used to have a slide where I talked about bare metal, um, and part of that was like looking at your grub conf and making sure that was set up because there's resources for that. Um, there are some resources around BIOS uh, setup, and I think it's going to call like DMI to code. So you would have to have that installed, um, or maybe, or maybe it's going through your proc and looking through what's exposed there. Um, it's easy to write new resources and, and write custom ones. Um, so if uh, if there's something that's not there, you know, the reason there's so many open source contributions is because it's easy, right? Adding new resources is pretty easy, and so the BIOS stuff you may have trouble like. You know what works on Dell might not work on HPE, but you know, writing new resources is, is fairly straightforward. And and DMI decode is where a lot of that information is hidden, um, or it's in proc. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, you have the ability to just read things off the Linux file system really easy. And and there's resources built in for most comp files as well. So wrap it up. Okay. Um, any other questions or? Okay. Well. I'll be over at the chef booth for a little bit longer and then uh, workshop upstairs. So thanks a lot, y'all.